Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another muscle building session. Check out this playlist up here for other muscle building sessions or other days. If you are brand new to Olympic weightlifting or you're just getting back into it after a few years, feel free to hop onto one of these cycles, either muscle building or strength building. I recommend doing about a six to eight week long period of either one. It doesn't really matter where you start at. So if you wanna strength build first, check out some of the other strength building workouts in this playlist. If you just look at the title of each one of the videos and each one of the cycles, it starts off with Monday all the way to Saturday. So you can pretty much just jump on wherever you want. I'll see you in the video. Just finished up the snatches, boys. Today felt pretty good, man. I worked up to 170 on the snatches today. 170. Obviously, I'm not breaking any world records today or in the near future, but I am feeling great today. And I am actually happy that the feeling of me getting better is continuing throughout each week that passes. It was just a neck impingement, but for any one of you guys that have experienced some sort of neck impingement or nerve pinching, whether it was on the left or right, you know that it's seriously uncomfortable. The thing that I didn't really take away from it is the fact that it actually affects your performance more than one would think. I went from snatching 225 on the regular week in and week out to barely snatching 165, 155 and having issues doing that. And hopefully you can take what I've learned throughout the past couple weeks in terms of keeping up my training for what reason I don't know in contrast to scaling it back, taking a break, prioritizing injuries, whether they be minor or major, in order to reach the bigger goal later on in the future. And that's a tough game to play, man. It really is a tough game to play. When to scale back? When is something actually considered an injury to where we need to actually scale back our training and start prioritizing the thing that hurts? All right, so the thing that was hurting for me Obviously my neck, I still do, and I'm still rehabbing it even now, but it feels a whole lot better. And it wouldn't start to feel better unless I actually scaled back my training, conducted short physical therapy sessions on it throughout the week, whether that be stretching, mobilizing, before I go to sleep, right when I wake up, right when I get to the gym, when I finish a workout. And so really putting focus into the thing that you know needs attention because it hurts, or you know your hip is tweaked out in some sort of way, yet you still try and lift dumb heavy weights throughout the week for some reason. I'm talking to you. Capturing quality audio for your videos can be annoying. This is the Small Rig W60. It comes with two small wireless transmitters and a receiver. You turn them on, they auto sync, no fuss. The transmitter fits right onto the cold shoe of your camera and allows you to monitor your audio levels. Just connect the supplied cable to the transmitter, then to your camera, turn on your wireless transmitters, and instantly start capturing live audio individually, which is, by the way, the number one feature in my book, the ability to be able to individually adjust and monitor both of your gains. It comes with a small dead cap for windy outdoor environments, easy to attach, which will allow you to just handhold the transmitter or you can clip it onto a collar or a shirt. And to be honest, the built-in mics don't sound terrible, it's what you're hearing me on right now, but for even better audio, you can attach your own lav mic. They don't include one in the kit. So right now I'm attaching a purple panda lav mic. This kit also comes with a TRRS cable for mobile devices. This is an iPhone right here, so I'm attaching and plugging the dongle to the iPhone and then back into the receiver. In a pinch, you can even monitor your audio through the headphone jack right on the receiver, and this just makes it convenient to ensure you're actually capturing clean sounding audio. Once I'm all done, I pack everything away into the charging case, and yes, it is a charging case, which even comes with an already attached USB cable. And once I'm all charged up, I can pack everything away nice and neatly into the supplied small rig carrying bag and be on my way. Snatches, 
in the hip pocket is what I was focusing on today. Getting that bar into the hips before hitting full extension. Tough, man. It's super tough for me to do that for some reason. I still experience difficulties doing that. Even though I've been Olympic weightlifting for years now, I haven't really paid attention to the small little nuances that need attention in terms of weightlifting until like the past year. And so things like reestablishing contact with the bar after the bar passes your knees, doing short little drills here and then, like no foot snatches, no foot cleans, keeping the knuckles down as long as possible, and really working on staying super connected to the bar throughout the entire movement. What does that mean? Well, that just means that I'm literally applying pressure towards the bar, whether that be actively pulling with my shoulders and lats, or whether just ensuring that my entire posterior chain is just super tight throughout the entire movement. These are things that I didn't necessarily think about when I was just doing the Olympic lifts while doing like CrossFit workouts. I would notice I would get really loose in certain parts of the lift. And normally those parts of the lift where I got loose or kind of like lost connection with the bar, those were like the most important parts of the lift, bro. Like when that bar gets into the pocket of your hips, first of all, that's, that's a pretty important part to hit. When I take a look around at just the average CrossFitter doing the snatch and the clean and jerk, very rarely do I see anyone actually hit the hip crease. Obviously everyone has different levers, and so like for the clean, for example, you may not actually hit the hip crease, but physically reestablishing connection to the bar with our hips is something that you can easily just kind of gloss over, especially when the weight gets heavy. And so after the bar passes the knees, it's just kind of just, you just kind of just go. You hear people say things like, keep the lats active, keep the bar close, but you just, you just, you think you're doing it, but you're not actually doing it if you were to film yourself in slow motion and watch that particular part of the lift and just watch yourself from a non-biased perspective and ask yourself the tough questions, like am I making contact with the barbell at some point in time after my knees or how long am I taking to actually reestablish contact with the barbell after the barbell passes my knees? A lot of times you'll see that as the weight gets heavy, you'll just literally straighten your legs almost all the way straight, the bar will pass your knees, and then the next time you reestablish contact with the bar is literally right when you're trying to get underneath it. And so you're trying to just do all of those things at once instead of just staying connected with the barbell as soon as it passes your knees, kind of where the teardrops of your quads are. That's the hardest part of the lift. As soon as the bar passes your knees, the bar needs to reestablish connection right with the teardrops of your quads and should stay connected with your entire quad all the way up into the hip crease, all the way up into full extension. And the only time the bar should come away from you is when you're retreating back down into the squat. Even then, that's just for a split second because you're reestablishing connection to the bar by way of the shoulder blades and the front rack position or just the overhead lockout position if you're doing the snatch. Today, I could say if I had to grade myself on the snatches today, I would probably give myself somewhere between like a C plus or a B minus or somewhere around there. I think I only had like maybe three lifts that I felt were satisfactory. All the other ones, I'm just gonna take them and put them in the garbage can. But I'll leave the rest of those lifts up here on YouTube so you guys can hopefully learn something from it. Snatch pulls felt pretty good today as well. We're still in muscle building phase right now, so we're still doing eights. This is the restart again, going from peaking to muscle building phase, and so you can literally jump on. This is the perfect time to jump on. We're doing eights, next week we're doing sevens, the following week we're doing sixes, and we're just gonna keep dropping down the reps, but increasing the weights all the way up until we get to peaking week, which is where we establish our one rep maxes. This occurs about every eight weeks. And so today was eight snatch pulls. You just literally do it until you feel like you can't do it anymore. I don't like necessarily limiting people to like only doing five sets or six sets. Just do them until you can't do them anymore. Listen to your body the best way that you can. So for me this morning, I think I did four sets of eight reps. They were not touch and go. I wanted to get the full reset for each one of the reps just to go through the entire process. Get some neurological pathway building exercises going on specifically for the snatch pool. But that's it for the snatch pools. Ended up getting up to 220, which is 100 kilos. Slowly trying to get my strength back. If you have been injured before, like 
I have. I'm pretty sure we could sympathize with each other because you always feel like you should be doing more. Even though you know that you're still trying to recover from an injury, I think it's like the ego inside of all of us that is just constantly telling us that you should be doing more. Like this, this is a dumb light weight. Like why am I even wasting my time lifting this weight? When you know for a fact, if you just jump right into the weights that you were previously lifting, you're probably gonna get injured again. And so if that's you, if you feel like you should be lifting more weights because you were previously lifting more weights, friendly reminder to you and I both that unfortunately, this thing takes time, man. This thing takes, it, it can take up to eight, nine weeks, sometimes 12 weeks, depending on the injury. And so just be patient, allow yourself to recover the proper way, that way you can reach your end goal, whatever that may be, man. Other than that, man, I appreciate you guys stopping in. This is six of six. Be nice to each other out there, man, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Here's a widely accepted yet misrepresented reason as to why people should exercise consistently. So I heard this narrative about exercising regularly on the radio station this morning. I'm not gonna name the radio station, <laughs> Radio 100, but the narrative about exercising regularly pretty much went like this. With social media at the palm of your hands and your ability to see different influencers and see them working out and see them involved in some sort of fitness in order to get abs, in order to get their chest looking all ripped up, we could get involved in some sort of like fitness trap to where we feel like we have to exercise in order to look like some of these different types of influencers that we may see on TV or on social media. So we really shouldn't be focused on exercising every day so we can get these bodies that we see on social media, but we should be more focused on what's going on inside. What's going on inside is much more important than what's going on outside. In which case I'd have to agree, but this is where I'm gonna push back. Consistently exerting yourself physically is not 100% hinged on outward bodily appearances. Most people should be involved in some sort of physical activity regularly or consistently due to its mental health benefits. Daily exercise has been historically proven to improve your overall mental stability. Consistently exercising has been attributed to combating things like Alzheimer's, depression and anxiety amongst many other things. Put it this way, are you suggesting that Big Tone 88 works out solely for Instagram abs and a ripped chest? Don't beat me up, Big Tone. We love you, dog. I know you might eat me or some shit. Or, or just maybe, maybe he's working out regularly because it makes him feel good inside. Am I against modern medicine and going to see a psychologist if you've been through something traumatic? Don't be stupid, man. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that, man. You know that's not what we're saying. What I am saying is there's not enough emphasis put on physical exercise. And that a doctor or psychologist is more prone to shoving pills in your mouth versus recommending a strength and conditioning program. By the way, if you are thinking about working out regularly for outward appearances, just know that that's very short lived. Hence probably the reason why people all work out on January 1st and by February 1st, they're back to square one. Working out for the sole reason of changing your outward appearance just isn't enough. You need much deeper of a reason and what better reason is there for lifelong mental health stability? Kick it, kick it, kick it. Young nigga, I got old cash, spazzing on the ass. I got product on my whole ass. Got my lab with me, pop a nigga like a damn tag, shopping on the ass. I just